Hey, hi, we are at part 187. Uh, we will look at few more latest questions. So in this question, the customer has like a very high usage certain times of the day. For example, Amazon.com, they see, or Amazon.in in India, their traffic is high in the daytime. So the company wants to reduce the number of EC2 instances when the application is low, obviously. So when you have a lot of users, you may say that I will use uh, 100 EC2 instances. Once the user base is less, you might do well with maybe 50 of them, okay? So that is what we are saying. So here, which service or instance purchasing option should the company use? So the question is about what should I purchase? What should I purchase? Because I uh, do not have a fixed usage. My usage is flexible. See, you have something called a compute savings plan. This plan is helpful for EC2, Lambda, Fargate, wherever you have compute. These all three services, they are compute services. They are compute services. That is why this will apply here. It does not apply to storage services. It applies to compute. Compute saving plan, common sense. It applies to compute services, not storage services. What does the saving plan do for you? You have to commit. You have to commit to marry and do not get divorced for 20, 25, 50 years. Okay. Here, it is not like that. You only commit. You only commit for one or three year term, either one year or three year. Okay. There is no locking period beyond that. Simple. So what do I gain out of it? I gain discounted prices. I get a lot of rebate because I am committing to something. If you have a cook at home and he or she cooks for you, suppose they charge 10,000 per month, it is fixed. Okay, you can ask them to cook dosas, you can ask them to cook noodles, pastas, parathas, anything. It is up to you. It is fixed. But the same thing, if you just say, I would not cook at home and I would go with Zomato, then your prices will not be fixed to 10K. It, it would be variable. It will be very high as well. You know, students, they have less money. In the final year project, colleges say, do this project. So you can use spot instances. It is cheap. You just bid for your price that you can give. And if nobody is using at that price, they will assign it to you. What is the problem? Somebody bids higher than you, you can lose the instance. Okay, that is that is the only problem with this. So you cannot run production workloads using this. Can you run production workload? No, boss. Can you run your student life workloads? Yes. Why? Because you are nobody. Your life does not matter. You are a student. So even if your application goes down for some time, you are still doing a research. Okay. So you are trying to live your life with a, with as small amount of money as possible. Minimalization. That is what you are trying to do in your student life. Or you might be working for an Indian company like Infosys, Vipro, TCS, etc. etc. Where they will have hardly any budget for research. Because you guys can use it. But people who are in other companies like Microsoft, Google, etc. You have the luxury to... Either reserve the instance for your research and etc. That is perfectly fine. But uh, what I'm hearing now is even those companies are seeing that okay, let's work the Indian way. Let's spend as little as possible. So spot instances will definitely not work here because why? Because see, boss, you are running Amazon.com, Amazon.in. Can you survive with a spot instance? No, there will always be a downtime or the instance will be taken away. You will lose customers you cannot afford. So you will you use EC2 auto scaling? See, auto scaling an option which you should use, but this is not a purchasing option. You want to use a purchasing option. EC2 auto scaling, it will only auto scale your EC2 instances. You want currently you have five instances, uh, immediately for uh, like 400 500 people came. You want to add two more instances, you can do that, okay, on the fly. That is auto scaling, but it is not a purchase option. So, option D is also wrong. Now, we have to choose between reserve instance and savings plan. See, here you can get up to 72% discount. It is uh, Compared to on-demand, on-demand if you use and then you use reserve instance, reserve instance will be cheaper. Reserve instance will be cheaper by what? Up to 72%. It may be 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 depending upon your usage. That is the amount of discount you will get. 
what is the advantage? It has a reserved capacity. You have, suppose you say five EC2 instances, I will go with it. Five instances will be yours for always. Okay, you get married, your wife is always for you, for yours. Okay, that was happening till 1970, not now. So you can save money, you can maintain flexibility. That is the advantage you are getting out of it. And how it, does it work? Pause this, read this portion, you will understand how does this work. Because it is not only about ratifying the answers, you have to understand the concept. So we have reserve instances, standard RI, convertible RIs, and schedule RIs. Pause this, read it. This one gets 72% off on demand, 54%, and these are available to launch within the time window you want to reserve. Okay. Now, see, reserve instances also will not fit in here. The reason why I'm saying is reserve instances, it is good for what if you are if you know exactly that. My workload will be fixed and I want 5 EC2 instances. I want 10 EC2 instances, 20, 30. But if you are not sure about it, go with savings plan. So option A, EC2 instance savings plan will be our answer. Instance saving plan works with all type of computes. What kind of computes? With Lambda, with Fargate, with EC2. Let us look at this next question. Now, there is a company and they store data in EC2 bucket. So there is a bucket. They store the data in this S3 bucket. The company has a lambda function what is lambda lambda is serverless computing serverless computing that means it is a two pesa people just like kamal khan it's a two pesa people what happens is you can uh, use this compute it is serverless so you don't have to worry about how do i set up the server you just fire the instances you write some python code or some sort of uh, code and it will work okay but it can last only for 15 minutes do not use it for high scale data transformation which takes more than 15 minutes because after 15 minutes it will auto destruct auto kill so in this case, what is happening? The company has Lambda function that processes data in S3. So what it takes the data from S3 and you have a Lambda function here. Lambda function will process it. The company needs to inv invoke this function once a day at a specific time. So this guy runs once a day at a particular time. What time? Maybe 9 o'clock, maybe 12 o'clock. We don't know. Which AWS service should the company use to meet this requirement? So what is the requirement? You need to kick this guy's ass at a particular time. Which guy's ass? Lambdas. That means activate this program at a particular time. Will you use manage AWS managed services? If you want operational excellence in the cloud, then you can go for managed services. What does it do? You can adopt AWS at scale. You can operate more efficiently. You can leverage AWS services, offer guidance, execution of operational best practice, etc. This is not what we need here. In this case, this is not what we need. Okay, what we need is we not we actually need a scheduler primarily. So let us look at code star. What is code star boss? What is the common sense code star? Something to do with code. You can quickly develop, build, and deploy your applications on AWS. Okay, this has been discontinued. You see this discontinuation of code star support. It will be discontinued from 31st July 2024. <laughs> Till that time, you can still see this in your exams. Code star, it enables you to develop quickly this application. It provides a unified user interface. Enabling you to easily manage your software activities at one place. You can do a continuous delivery tool chain building in minutes. So this is a different thing. It will not help you activate your program at a particular uh, time. In case you don't know what is continuous delivery, please pause this, read this and understand what is continuous delivery. So we know here code star will not work. What is what are step functions? Step functions. The step functions it is used for workflow orchestration, visual workflows for distributed applications. You see this. Uh, let us understand. The benefits quick onboarding simple automation you can create a workflow after this this guy will run after that this guy will run etc etc so you can create a workflow workflow like for example Rohit Sharma will come as an opener and after that uh, someone else will come Virat Kohli will come and etc etc so you can create that workflow that orchestration you can create but what is event bridge let us look at event bridge we can put an event driven application what is the event what is the event we are looking for event is activating a particular program at a particular amount of time you can easily build loosely coupled or event driven architectures that is the uh, advantage you can create triggers, manage billions of events. So ours is an event. We want to schedule it. You see this source with Amazon event bridge scheduler. This is this is what we are doing. We can schedule things. So if I compare step functions, step function is for workflow. That means first you run this, then you run this, then you run this. You can set up this because here in this case we just have one thing. We just want to run this at a particular time. So we will use event bridge over step functions. So event bridge final answer option C. So in this next question, next question, you have a sensitive data. What if you have sensitive data on AWS, you have potential potential exposure. You are scared the data might get leaked to someone. What should I do? If you're saving this data in S3 bucket, you want to identify 
that in least amount of time which documents have sensitive data what will you do my friend use messy don't mess it up messy not messy okay so discover and protect your sensitive data at scale so what it does is you have mind you focus here you have s3 bucket you put messy on top of it messy will go and here and then say okay guys let me scan it will just pick one rock at a time and see okay beneath the rock there is a pii sensitive data sensitive data what is sensitive data social security number credit card number etc etc and it will say hey guys this rock under this document i found two pii one is social security one is credit card number under that document i found one more pii it will keep scanning and give you a final report okay guys i scanned 100 documents i could find only two documents which has pii okay and you can also ask it to remove it that is why Macy is our answer in this case. And in case whatever story I explain, you want to understand this through a diagram, this is the diagram. Okay, pause this, read it, come back, please. Now you might ask, why not glue? First, glue is a ETL. If you have loads of data you want to load to a database, then you use AWS glue because this is used for a for an ETL purpose. It is similar to data stage, it is similar to app issue, it is similar to Azure Data Factory in the AWS world. Now, what is poly? You must have heard about poly. What is poly? Now, if you want to do text to speech kind of thing, so natural sounding human voices into dozens of languages, you can use this customize and control speech output that supports lexicons and etc. How it works? Poly uses a deep learning technologies. It obviously such things will use deep learning technology. It will synthesize the human speech and convert the articles to speech with dozens of life like voices. You can use this, okay? Text to speech, speech to text, speech to speech, whatever is the case. Secrets manager, it will hold your secrets. What sort of secrets? Like your certificates, your SSL certificates, your passports, and etc. My friend, it is a security solution. It is a security solution. It is not a solution which we can use for removing PII or for identifying PII. So, in this case, in sensitive data, the moment I see sensitive data in any of the exam, I just close my eyes and I understand they want to uh, save themselves from the mess. I would use Macy common sense. Now, if you are not a subscriber, do so. If you are new to this channel, subscribe, go through a lot of these videos. It will help you clear the certification. Lot of people, tens of people have cleared it. They have put their comments on different videos. Do not wait and do not ask this question. Is this content still valid? Yes, boss. This content is still valid because AWS has not changed a bulk of its services. Okay. So common sense, common sense, common sense. The content, each and every content is still valid. Now, AWS keeps launching some of the services in between. AWS keeps decommissioning some of the services. Decommission is very, 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 very rare. But introducing new service is very, 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 very common. So keep in tune of my certain videos that we launch on new services, new features. Okay. So understand that because that will be added to any certification in AWS. It may be solution architect, associate, professional, intermediate, cloud practitioner, anything. So, okay. So, so keep a track on the new features videos that we keep launching. This brings us to the end of part 187. There are a lot of parts which are in the paid content group. Please visit that. How to visit it? You have to take a membership, join and become a cloud kernel or a cloud ninja member and gain access to these videos. Happy learning. See you in the next.